Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful summer night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a Wednesday night. I think it is, what, August 23rd or 4th? Somewhere in there, I can't read it. Somewhere in there, 2022. So anyway, guys, we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Uh, perhaps foolishly, I am, uh, I don't know if I am engaging in a debate with uh, our favorite uh, contrarian climate change denier here at Collapse Chronicles and all over the Doomosphere, the infamous Book Hermit. Book Hermit, who has been a, uh, a regular voice here uh, in the Doomosphere for years, and uh, people are often asking me, why don't you kick this climate change denying idiot off of your channel? That he's bringing down the collective IQ of uh, your otherwise fairly intelligent channel. I, I have probably had more requests to ban Book Hermit than anybody else, but I continue to defend the man. Uh, Book Hermit is not a clueless moron. Okay, the man clearly understands that we are doomed. He, he absolutely understands overpopulation, uh, overconsumption, overextraction, uh, habitat uh, destruction, biodiversity collapse. Uh, the, the man obviously knows his stuff, but uh, as we all know with our good friend Book Hermit, <clears throat> it is the climate alarmist, as he calls them, the climate alarmist that he really loves to rile up to uh, being a contrarian sounding, you know, uh, like Willie Soon, if you're familiar with Willie Soon or Lord Moncton. You know, the Alex Jones, uh, Fox News, Tucker Carlson crowd that uh, Book Hermit just seems to have this blind spot about climate change. Now, as I've said before, I, I, I do agree with Book Hermit on, on, on one part of this. Uh, I, I solidly agree with Book Hermit that climate change gets way too much of the attention about what is going on on this planet. The, the collapse of this planet, uh, you know, to, to the vast majority of, of people just walking around through life, uh, and, and if judging by stories in the media and whatnot, you would tend to think that climate change is the only environmental story on the planet. Uh, which unfortunately is not true, as I have said many times, and I'm pretty sure I'm speaking for Book Hermit, that if climate change was no in the picture. If it was completely out of the picture, humans acting like humans, going about their daily lives, if we did not make one iota of difference to what's going on in the atmosphere and the oceans, it might buy us a few more years to limp along to collapse this planet. This planet will collapse with zero help from climate change. Uh, so does climate change get too much press? I'm, I don't think climate, cha climate change gets too much press. It's just that all the other reasons that we're doomed don't get any press. Obviously, the O word being one of them. Climate change is one more of the ingredients in the toxic stew that is contributing to the collapse of the planet. So we don't need less climate news. We need more 
everything else news. Uh, but anyway, so I, I do agree with Book Herman on that, that I get a, a little irritated with the over, you know, acting like, uh, acting like we fix the climate and we fix the planet, okay? There, there is nothing about fixing the climate that is going to fix this planet when there's 8 billion humans on it. It's going to make no difference. It's going to make the little uh, uh, lefty greenies, you know, think that they're doing something to save the planet. It's going to give all of these literal planet eaters. Uh, I should be doing an, another rant that I'm doing. I just had to get this one off my chest. It, it's simply shifting one set of problems the, the fossil fuel problem over to uh, the other set of, you, you know, dig up the planet to save the planet. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's taking one problem and just sticking it over into another problem. So anyway, uh, all of that as a background, I just want to, uh, I've been enjoying, uh, as I say, not exactly debating Book Hermit, because I agree with uh, a lot of what he says. I am simply trying to figure out why he is so steadfast uh, in, in his climate change denial. So we're going to uh, just go through the comments here. There, there's been two comment streams running. Uh, at the same time as a reaction to the video, as the earth scorches, time is running out as avaz.org boldly vows to save half the planet. All right, so uh, Book Hermit led off this exchange. <clears throat> Book Hermit. As Earth refuses to comply with alarmist, Arctic sea ice extent was higher than all other years since 2007, except for 2009 and 2014 this month so far, i.e. the blue ocean event will remain a total myth for the foreseeable future. Uh, now, so I see that he's going all the way back in his research to the to the ancient year of 2007. That is really digging deep, Book Hermit. Man, you roll this clock back 15 years, brother. That that really gives a as far as the extent was concerned. But my, so my response to that comment, though he got two thumbs up on that comment, so my comment to Book Hermit, and, and I do consider Book Hermit a friend, I can certainly see why you were banned at environmental coffee house. I appreciate the moxie of your arrogance. I will not bother to debate you about the definition of the word extent as the extent of your willful ignorance on this topic dwarfs the Arctic ice by a million square kilometers. Go back to Willie Soon and Lord Mockton now to confirm your lunacy. <laughs> Book Herbert's response to me was, that quote was straight from Sea Ice News which does daily monitoring and weekly explanation of current Arctic conditions, I'll leave playing with Willie to you. My response to that, it has nothing to do with the source. My guess is that Paul Beckwith would not argue with that point, and neither do I. If you can find the source that says sea ice volume, is the largest it has been in years. Please send it to me. As far as I know, not even Willie Soon or Lord Mockton 
would tell such a whopper. And uh, so then I sent him a link to this article from fizz.org. Fizz.org, which maybe I should be reading instead of doing this visual aid. Fizz.org explaining the difference between sea ice extent and sea ice volume. So I, I don't know if Book Hermit read the article or not. His response to that was, and so what? I wasn't talking about volume. My response to that, exactly. Volume is the only thing that matter, matters. Extent means nothing in the long haul. It is an irrelevant red herring used by clueless morons, which you are not, and climate deniers, which you are. When it gets cold, water freezes. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, and then he finally, I, I get a little peek what he is driving at, which I have to admit, I, I'm very happy he explained himself. Uh, just the opposite. It is extent that matters since that is what determines any change in surface absorption, otherwise known as albedo, which is the basis for nearly all the alarmist fears. Volume only matters on land where decreasing volume can raise sea levels which is conflating another argument. That's an interesting argument, and I know what he's driving at, but it has nothing whatsoever to do with what I am talking about. Like that article in fizz.org, that, that, that's a whole nother rant, what, what he's talking about there, uh, about how volume uh, only matters on land. Um, Okay, uh, Okay. then the second part uh, of this comment thread, so Book Harmit starts out is, it's not about saving the planet, it's about how many humans, it, meaning the planet, can sustain. And the answer to that lies far more in human psychology than in the condition of the Earth. So long as human population and or resource use expands, all other life on Earth will contract as it is forced out by competition. So it's just a matter of how we end up killing enough of one another to reach a balance, and uh, so my response to uh, Book Hermit, I literally do not understand how the same brain that wrote this comment left that blathering idiocy about Arctic ice extent versus Arctic ice volume. Even Sancho Panza understands there is less chicken on a big shallow plate than in a small, deep bowl. So this is going to bring us in to our, uh, our visual aid here. Uh, let's see, so then Book Hermit comes back. I didn't write anything about ice extent versus ice volume. I just pointed out that late ice late summer ice extent is not rapidly declining. I said nothing about volume. I did put in that the big scary BOE is an alarmist meme. I expect for the next few decades we will continue to have similar ice extent lows declining only very gradually, but, but, that multi-year thicker ice will continue to decline to near none. So Book Hermit understands that the multi-year thicker ice 
is declining. With each year, the multi-year thicker ice that has been around for years, decades, who knows, centuries, probably been hanging around since the last millennia. That, uh, you know, it's the big kahuna uh, ice uh, that is melting. It's completely has nothing. It, it, it's... It, it, it's it's two different uh, discussions we're having. So my response uh, to that is, you are one confusing dude, amigo. If you, like I and Sancho Panza, understand that multi-year thicker ice will continue to decline to near none, which is the only thing that matters, why do you or anyone give a rat's ass about the completely irrelevant extent crap? It means nothing, and reporting it accomplishes nothing other than giving intellectual midgets such as Alex Jones ammunition to keep his clueless moron audience confused. And Book Hermit coming in with one last comment. <clears throat> because even with zero, even with zero multi-year ice, the Arctic will keep refreezing every winter and keep that ice long enough to prevent the scary heat loop the alarmists call BOE. So long as there is still reasonable ice extent in August, there is no such loop possible. Okay, so this is where I guess uh, I will debate. Uh, I, I, I will debate uh, Book Hermit. Okay, guys, I'm going to fully admit I have never in my entire life taken a climate science class. Never been in a climate science. I'm going to take a wild guess. That book hermit has never in his entire life studied, uh, I mean, other than, you know, what's about, you know what I'm saying. I, 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 I am virtually certain that book hermit has never taken a climate science course in his entire life. I am pretty much 100% certain that Guy McPherson has never taken a climate uh, science class. I am virtually certain that Alex Jones, Lord Moncton, Willie Soon, I'm pretty sure that Jennifer Hines has never taken a class. As anybody in the doom, as, as anybody weighing in on this subject, ever taken so much as Arctic Ice Melt 101? Well, I guess Paul Beckwith I guess Paul, I'm sure Paul has got to have had an explanation on this. I should have uh, researched that. I should have called Paul up, but of course Paul uh, Beckwith does not speak to me. I, I don't understand what I did to offend Paul Beckwith, but Paul Beckwith uh, will never speak to me again as long as he lives. Anyway. That it's not like Paul Beckwith is the only doomer and ever speaking to me. But anyway, this is just how I understand it. This is just a guy with a brain. How I understand volume versus extent. Uh, okay, and I think Sancho Panza understands this, but Sancho, we're going to have to move. You. Okay. So here we have a deep jar and we have a shallow plate. Okay, so this plate is about, has about six times the extent of this deep jar. So you see how deep the water in the jar. The, the water in the jar is between two and three inches. So pretend like 
this is ice, not water. Wow, watch how the water takes the shape of its container. This is the same amount of water. This is really, this is really a uh, university level. Uh, <laughs> This, this is physics and climate science all wrapped up in one. Don't say I, I, I don't ever offer a really in-depth uh, reporting. So now what you have is you have six times the surface area and the water is one-sixth as deep. There you go. The water comes halfway up my fingernail. There you go. It's the same volume of water. So if this were ice, the difference between extent and volume. This is the multi-year thick Ice that that's been uh, that, that that's been going on for decades and centuries. No shit, Sherlock. So every year, when it gets cold, the surface water is is going to melt. That's what happens. Now I'm a southerner. I you know it's like I've never been ice skating. It's just like you know my my sister who lives in Vermont. She just bought a place. My this is my rich sister. She just bought this lake house in northeastern Vermont went to visit her last and she was telling the story about how a few years ago you know how they did this ice fishing and they actually drove cars that she used to be able to drive cars across the lake and uh, so every year the lake freezes it looks beautiful you're looking out over the lake from her picture window, and there's people out there ice skating and ice fishing and whatnot. But a few years ago, I guess they drove a car out there, which was completely safe to do, and the car fell through the ice, and it's still sitting on the bottom of the lake, so they don't allow driving on this lake in northern Vermont anymore because the ice volume. Uh, it, 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 does, it, it doesn't freeze as thick. Now, of course, in the Arctic, I mean, I mean in, well, in Vermont, you, you know, all of the ice freezes, uh, you know, every year and thaws every year, but we're talking the Arctic where this ice piles up. Now, I admit, I did not, I'm glad he mentioned that albedo effect. Uh, but what, all it is ever me, meant to me is that this is just evidence uh, of, that the oceans are heating up. The ice is melting, I think, from below is where it's melting. I mean, the oceans are warming up. The, the ice, the, you know, the thick stuff. The, uh, the stuff that went up to here, that's the stuff that matters. Uh, so I guess, you, you, you know, that this uh, extent in, in the effect on the albedo, maybe I'm not paying enough attention to it. I'm just looking at the Arctic ice volume uh, just as the leading indicator. Well, that and all of those, you know, and the melting uh, glaciers up in Greenland and whatnot with all of that stuff pouring in. You know, the stuff on the mainland is just one more piece of no shit Sherlock evidence that uh, the planet is doomed, that the Arctic ice is collapsing. It is collapsing on land and it's collapsing on the ocean. And the fact uh, that no shit Sherlock, uh, that you have this annual freeze when the weather gets cold. I mean, wow, I never would have thought of that. Uh, but anyway, guys, I hope you understand the difference between volume and extent. 
and it, it, am I missing something here? Is Book Hermit missing something here? This is this is one more little bitty ingredient, you know, in the chronicle of the collapse of a planet. That's what I do with my life, is I chronicle the collapse of planet Earth. This is a crystal clear example of the of planet Earth collapsing in front of our eyes. The multi-year thick ice getting thicker, getting thinner and thinner, and even Book Hermit realizes this, but I guess Book Hermit, do you just don't have a problem with that? It, 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 I'm not going to take this rant into what that you were commenting about the sea level rise. It has nothing to do, melting ice in the ocean has nothing to do with sea level rise. I agree with Booker. Maybe that has to be another rant. I agree with Booker. Uh, you know, when my ice melts in my margarita, the, the level of the liquid doesn't go up. Uh, come on, Book Hermit. Do, I ha do we have to explain that one to people? Uh, that is an entirely different story about that uh, melting ice and this has nothing to do with sea level rise. It's just, it's just one more piece of, of evidence that we're doomed. Anyway, that's uh, my Climate Science 101. And if if I if if I'm missing something, please let me know. And uh, maybe tomorrow I'll get around to doing the rant that I wanted to be doing today about uh, switching from fossil fuels to you know just another bright green lie rant. But we will save the bright green lies for another night. My guys.